Hi, Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. All right, I think I got it this time. <clears throat> this Miyagi's going crazy over there, obsessed with Q-tips. So I just give her all of them. They're everywhere. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna wait, allow some people to log on. It's Thursday, January 9th. We have the full moon eclipse happening tomorrow morning. So it's a big one. And The more the merrier that logs on. All right. All right. Hello. Who's in the house? <laughs> so the last half hour, I've been looking at the chart and thinking about what this might mean for us. It is in Cancer. Oh. So, you guys, my desktop isn't powering on again. Like, so now I'm all on my laptop, and I usually have, I'm live on my laptop or my computer, and then I'll have my notes. So now I have to put it all in one. So bear with me. Hi, can you throw up some emojis? I want to know who's in the house. Hasn't really said anything, but as you can see, if you look outside, it's a full moon in Cancer. It's a full moon in Cancer. Cancer was just conjunct the north node of the moon. And so because the nodes have a lot to do with the eclipses, so yeah, we're definitely trying to balance this energy out for sure. So I'm just going to get started. Full moon in Cancer tomorrow morning at 1121. It is going to be a partial lunar eclipse in which we will not see here in California in the States, but it will be felt. And I'm sure you guys are already filling it now. So what is a full moon? It's when the sun, hi, Genji, the sun and the moon are opposing one another. And because it's a partial lunar eclipse, the, the earth is moving in between the two illuminaries, which is going to cast a shadow, but it's only partial shadow. So the, the moon is ruled by Cancer, and Ginger, you're a Cancer. This is your big full moon. We get one full moon and one new moon each year, so annually. So this is your full moon, and it's on steroids. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for joining. Could you please put up your sun sign? I think you're a Leo but I just want to make sure. Um, so this is a huge completion and also an illumination. But as, as a collective and each of us, this represents our masculine and our feminine energy, right? The sun is our masculine energy and the moon is a feminine energy could also be the mother and the son is more of a father figure. And also Saturn is like the father of time, right? And you have Venus and, um, okay, good. You're a Leo. Oh yeah. It's pretty bright. It kind of looks like it's illuminated in a cross, but you know what was crazy was before I logged on, I was looking at the, at like the past uh, eclipses in Cancer, 
the last couple of years. And it started in July, July 12th of 2018. And it was at 20 degrees cancer. And this eclipse is at 20 degrees cancer. Um, that was a solar eclipse. This one's a lunar eclipse. So whatever had been happening July of 2018, there was something that was highlighted and now maybe the work has been done and maybe it's coming to a close. Maybe that chapter is coming to a close or, or we're seeing where we need to put forth some work in it, um, or a new set, right? So th that one, July 12th of 2018, that's when there was a huge star of David in the sky. So there was like two trines and you could rewatch that video, which I'm going to rewatch it. So you just go back to the, the solar eclipse in Cancer for July of 2018 on my YouTube channel. And you could rewatch that video and see if you could um, get some some clarity on maybe what is um, what is re being looked at or integrated or a chapter has been closed from there. So that that's what I'm gonna do. So I highly I highly suggest doing that. Okay, so getting back to this energy. So I'm gonna talk first about the sun opposing the moon, which is the full moon eclipse. I'm gonna talk about the eclipse energy. I'm gonna talk about Uranus going direct, which will be happening tomorrow at 547. I'll be talking about Mercury conjunct the sun, which is happening during this transit, as well as Jupiter conjunct the south node. And Pluto conjunct Saturn, I've already beat like a dead horse, so I won't get too much into that. But yeah, those are the things I'm going to be talking about in this video today. So stay tuned if you want to hear it all. So we're being asked to, okay, so balancing, it's, it's important that we're balancing these two energies within us, right? The masculine and the feminine energy. Because the, there is like a stellium of planets in Capricorn, which means there, there's like four, four or five celestial bodies in one area of the sky. So we need to counterbalance that. The moon is just all by its little lonesome in Cancer with the North Node. And this is where we're supposed to be heading. But there's so much things from the past that's holding us back. And so as a collective, we need to embrace that moon energy, that cancer energy, that home energy, and, and you know, kind of like a crab or a turtle, their home is on their back. And so we're also re-looking at that too, not just our home within like the, the, the walls, the 3D walls that surround us, but like the home within our body, like, like like our experiences, like the home in which lies within our relationships, our careers, our jobs, and other stuff. Oh, hi, hi, Ki hi, Ki yeah, hi. I got her the telescope for Christmas. Oh, how cool. Yeah, she better check out that, that um, moon tonight. Kaya, oh, she's so cute. Um, tell her I said hi. Well, she probably heard me. Hi. <laughs> um, thanks for thanks for joining. Hi, Elisa. Um, okay, so going back to the home, because I'm I'm on this subject, I want to talk a little bit about cancer. So cancer is building the foundations of life through the warmth, this is what we want more of right now to counterbalance that stellium. Um, the warmth of nurturing and love. So nurturing, um, supportive love, right? Uh, re redefine what the home is. And it's not just the 3D walls, what I was saying, but it's the home within. The wholeness of life that consists of the room. So the rooms in your house, they, the wholeness of life, which are your friends, your career, your relationships, your love, 
And the real question is how illuminated are these rooms? Are they dark? Are they light? And I've used this analogy before because I think it's a really good analogy for the cancer type of energy that's happening right now. So do any of these bulbs need to be changed? Do your friends need to be changed? Do your communities, do your job, um, do your relationships? Are they serving you? So being a disciple of cancer is being of service to humanity. And that's what's necessary right now. That's what's needed right now because there's so much going on. I mean, there's fires in Australia, there's earthquakes, like people are losing their homes. Like it keeps happening over and over in some countries like Puerto Rico, they're feeling, they're feeling like giving up, right? So we need to start giving back and nurturing our communities, nurturing our friends, nurturing the world. If we have it good, let's give back. So that's really going to help balance all of this Capricorn energy. And we're being asked to embrace and enhance our nurturing feminine energy to bring more balance with all of this Capricorn energy. There is a square of tension happening between Venus and Mars, which is the masculine and feminine archetype, which is asking us to look deeper into these aspects. We are being asked to look through the eyes of our, our higher self or spirit or soul self into the future to make sense of what is being revealed to us right now. So the masculine is being healed during this transit because there, there's a connection with Chiron, which is the wounded healer, and is, being, and, and is being shown what needs attention. So, so then the masculine energy can soar higher than he has before. So his, his eyes are seeing more clearly as to what his values are. And they are, they're changing and they're evolving. So... This is, this is something that is helping evolve humanity because we all have masculine and feminine energy within. The feminine energy is wanting to connect with the communities and reach out to as many people as possible to hold light so the darkness doesn't travel any further. All right, so that's out of the way. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the partial eclipse. So this is where the, the earth passes between the sun and the moon. This is definitely an energy of earth groundedness, like reality bites, okay? If reality is like, come back to earth, you little earthling. You might be a spiritual being, but you still live in the 3D. You still have to pay your bills. You still have to go to work. You still have to do your work as a human here, right? So all this earth energy is like, bam, I'm re in reality. We may be going through a financial reality check. We might have been maybe not putting enough energy into our finances or our relationships or our marriages, and now we're experiencing hardship within those. So because Saturn is conjunct Pluto, anything that is contractual, any kind of contractual agreements is Saturn and Pluto is destroying it, right? So any kind of stability that we had found in those things are being tested right now really frustrating, right? Really frustrating. All right. Now I'm moving on to Uranus direct. Now I thought that this was quite interesting because Uranus went stationary retrograde on my birthday, August 12th. And that's literally when the shit hit the fan in my life. I got sung by a bee. My dog died. Um, someone stole my credit card information, so I had fraudulent activity. I went out to just have a drink at the bar after a meeting in Oakland, and he's like, ma'am, your driver's license is expired. I was like, oh, of course it is. <laughs> like everything in my life sucks ass monkeys. So that being said, 
It's stationary, going direct tomorrow. Thank freaking God. I would like my sanity back. That would be nice. So with Uranus, Uranus is the ruling planet of Aquarius. It rules eccentricity, um, future thinking, um, technology, and obviously for Leos, it would be our partnership, right? So this is business partnerships and, and marriages. And so this has been retrograde and all that stuff had happened and hopefully it'll clear the air. And I'm sure Aquarius is, we're going to be feeling so much better. Maybe Aquarius is or wherever Aquarius is in your chart has been dragging through the mud because when you're honest is stationary, it, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, it barely moves because it's so far out. So it's so not moving. So when this happens, it'll take probably, I'm going to guess until like around the end of February, I could look at the, at the degrees, but my guess is it's going to take about a month in order for Uranus to start moving forward. But you're going to have a sense of relief in this area of wherever Aquarius is and Taurus. So if Taurus is in your 10th house, maybe your career will start picking up again. If it's in your sixth house, maybe you'll have a turnaround and your health and your routines will start to get in order. If it's in your second house, maybe you'll start getting money again. Maybe your pockets were being burned a hole in or something. Maybe money wasn't coming in, okay? So wherever you're honest, you're honest is in Taurus, so it's going direct. And Taurus is our value. Now, as a collective, we will be able to start moving forward in the things that we value because we've been reconsidering what it is that we value, right? Now we can start moving forward and be like, okay, now I know what I value. Now I know. So it's time for me to start putting into action towards the things that I value and focusing more on that. Now, what else? Okay, Mercury conjunct the sun. In the last two videos, I've not talked about Mercury conjunct the sun. So Mercury is conjunct the sun as well. We have a lot of like power players. So I see like the sun and the moon. I see like Leos and Cancers, like kind of opposing each other, right? Then I see um, your uh, Mercury and Sun. So I see Leos pairing with Geminis and Virgos, right? Then I see Jupiter. Jupiter is conjunct the South Node, but then Pluto and Saturn, which is which is uh, Capricorn and Scorpios, like pairing up together. Um, so this Mercury is Gemini for sure. And Mercury is the communication plant. We all know about Mercury retrograde. That's when like our phones don't work and like our computers are slow and maybe there's cancels and flights and stuff like that. But when Mercury is moving direct and it pairs with the sun, it's like totally putting that energy on steroids. So we're going to be getting the like, also much needed information coming to light, right? Because it's information and the sun is light. So we're gonna be busy-minded, energetic, and we're ready to take care of the communication aspects of life. So we could be taking care of getting our car worked on. We could be like maintaining our car. We could be getting our finances together, like um, getting our emails done. Maybe like audition times, like where are the play, uh, what are the theaters that I want to audition for? Um, getting the things checked off of our to-do list. Like we are busy little bees right now, right? We're feeling that energy. So good luck sleeping tonight. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. All right. So there's a lot more where that came from, I'm sure, but I want to make this kind of short. So Jupiter conjunct the South Node, I did talk a lot about this, but it is about Sagittarius blending with 
the karmic and the past life energy. Maybe this energy of Jupiter, okay, um, Jupiter, because Jupiter is in Capricorn right now, maybe we're seeing what, like, we created for ourselves karmically, okay? Maybe we were just like, woohoo, life is great. I'm going to just charge up these credit cards like they ain't no tomorrow because that's what's making me feel good right now because I need this monetary happiness. And then all of a sudden all the bills come in and like you see the APRs and you're like sweating balls over here. You're like, oh God, this is just retarded. Why did I do that? Well, it was to keep me happy. So now you have all this karmic stuff that you're having to deal with. You're seeing the karmic stuff too, maybe from past lives, past relationships and stuff like that. But we're seeing, also seeing, because the South Node is patterns, like cycles, like past lives, karmic contracts, and they're all coming to an end. So we're seeing like, hey, some relationships, maybe karmic relationships, maybe you were putting all the work in, or maybe you've been paying for everything. So how I see karmic relationships is if one person is putting in more than the other. So usually you find this in, let's say, relationships or marriages where one person's making all the, the money and the other person's just like kicking back receiving it. Okay, that's karmic. That person owes a debt to you from maybe a past life or something. And those usually don't work because they're not equals. They're not balanced. You know, that, that's why they were like, oh, it's money issues. People get divorced of money issues. No, maybe it's just you owed them from a past life and now the contract is done. You paid your dues. Now move on. So that has to do a lot with Jupiter highlighting these karmic type of contracts and deals. We are seeing clearly what is not working for us anymore. We are understanding why we had to experience the things that we had to experience. They're becoming a little more clearer now. So now we can break free of the bondage of those karmic cycles and we can evolve our souls. We can move forward. So no connection no connections or relationships will be able to sustain through these eclipses. So anything that's fake, anything that's surface, anything that's karmic is just like, if it's done, it's done. It just needs to go, right? Because you have to make room for the old, for like, you have to make room for the new to come in. So you have to kind of like, get rid of the old stuff. So you might even be like cleaning out your house, cleaning out your closets, getting rid of things because this new year's I felt more of endings than beginnings. And like, of course, every ending is a beginning. So I don't know why I just said that, but it's just because of this, this South node business that's happening, I guess. All right. So yeah, um, our higher self and our souls are smarter than what our 3D ego human experience has been repeating over and over and over. So I like to say I'm no broken record. I'm digital media live, baby. That's me. That's me. And Miss Miyagi's loving me right now because I'm talking and I never talk. And when she hears me talk, she gets excited. And I really only talk when I'm on the phone, which is hardly ever, and when I'm doing live videos, so she's happy. Hi, Ray. Hi, Marcos. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, I am done pretty much of everything that I really wanted to talk about for this, so if you guys have any questions or you'd like me to pick an Alice in Wonderland card, I'd love to. Um, yeah, so... I, so, uh, <laughs> okay, cat energy, yeah, I'm having a little cocktail because it's my Friday, mm-hmm, pull a card, all right. 
So did I touch base on anything? Can you guys relate? Oh, on point as always. Hey, what's up, David? I miss you. Where have you been? Where have you been, son? Did your karmic contracts end? Manage to be glad. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit. Give you some dates of what's going on for, okay, because this is the cancer, right? So the first cancer eclipse, J July 12th, 2018, at 20 degrees cancer. Then the solar eclipse on July 2nd, 2019, at 10 degrees cancer. These are dates that you, you should look back on to see where you were and who you were involved with or what kind of job you had or whatever to kind of give you clues on what the universe is shifting for you. Um, and then this eclipse is at 19, 20 degrees Cancer, which is a lunar eclipse tomorrow. We have two more eclipses in Cancer 2020. Okay, the most eclipses that you could have in a year is seven, and we're having six. So hold on to your panties and your boxers because it's going to be a fun little ride. 2020, all the shifts are happening to put us on our path so we can start making shit happen in 2021. So, yeah, 2020 is a gestation period, and a lot of partners, divine partnerships, are getting together because. Twos are everywhere, especially with this eclipse. Twos, 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 twos. And it's 2020, which is a four, numerology, which is stability. And you're laughing. And because I'm right. Because I only see your ass when you're single. <laughs> I love you, but it's true. Some peeps just be like that. You know what I'm saying? Some peeps just be like that. I could be coupled and still be out and about with my friends because that's how I roll. Okay, so repeat dates. July 12th, 2018. July 2nd, 2019. Solar eclipse, solar eclipse. Now we're coming into lunar eclipse tomorrow. Lunar eclipse tomorrow in Cancer. Then we have June. 20th cancer solar eclipse the last solar eclipse okay and that is at zero degrees cancer and then we have no lunar eclipse july 4th at 13 degrees cancer which is fairly close to the one that we're having tomorrow so after tomorrow we'll have two more eclipses in this area of the sky it's going to wrap it up and then we're going to start moving to gemini and Sagittarius. What's up, Daniel Garza? I know. What's up? Dang. You know everyone, Missy. We know a lot of the same people. So you got those dates? All right. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of crap going on for the last week. I think maybe that's why people's been kind of like tired and drained and feeling a little cray cray or angry oh my god people's been just hating left and right i'm like i'm a light baby keep on hating don't bother me none just lets me know that i'm on the right path Woo! boom such a curious dream such a curious dream grounding returning to reality and coming home this one again uh, but it's true. It's so true because this, we have the stellium in Capricorn. And I was talking about how we are grounded in reality. Grounded in reality. Oh, okay. My friend's here. Okay, so 45. Let's see. So this is a, such a curious dream. Grounding, returning to reality, and coming home. See, see, she looks like we be filling. You know what I'm saying? 
Oh, I had such a curious dream, said Alice, and she told her sister, as well as she could remember them, all these strange advent adventures of hers. And when she had finished, her sister kissed her and said, it was a curious dream, dear, certainly, but now run to your tea. It's getting late. We, we often have rem remarkable moments, just as Alice does, when she begins her journey by following the white rabbit. But just as we must follow the dream, we must also return to the everyday. In this card, at this moment, you are being asked to return to what many people might consider ordinary. I don't like ordinary. I'm a dreamer. I'm a Leo. Let's see. You must take care of yourself. Eat well, go home, be grounded, and take care of what must be taken care of. The ordinary and yet blessed responsibility within our lives. There is still great magic in this, especially after journeying through your, our own wonderland and knowing true enchantment. For we, we can return, but we are forever changed. Now it is time to ground, go home, integrate the experiences that you've had, and do the very simple mundane tasks that most people don't consider special enough to have any magic at all within them, like paying bills. But they're magic, dear soul. They are. Let every simple act be done with awareness, simplicity, gratitude, and kindness. Do not be dissatisfied with the seemingly mundane nature of it all. Instead, embrace this coming back to earth as an opportunity to ground, reconnect, and to bring a sense of the sacred, of the magic of Wonderland to all that you do, no matter how humble it may be. You will return to that extraordinary place again but for now embrace the joy of being at home within your humanity all right four plus five is nine these are endings yeah nine's an ending it's coming back home it's coming back home from a journey we're ending a journey just like i said because there is new beginnings on the horizons that we don't see yet. Hence, all the fog lately. Physical fog and mental fog. I've had writer's block. So the deviation for this card is a time when work must be done. Eat well, prepare good moods, mood, <laughs> prepare good meals, take care of your health and your body, because we need that during all this crazy energy going on. Make magic in your everyday activities and ordinary moments. A return from an ordinary experience, adventure, travel, or holiday. When the time is right, you will encounter Wonderland once again. Cancer is home. So yeah, it is about coming home. It's about finding what we truly do value and what our home that we created is about what it looks like the the home of our our human existence as karina right now like everything that i've been through is my home i you know graduated college you know i started my own business i i've had shifts within groups of friends i've had shifts in communities i moved to san diego i'm back you know, my journey thus far is my home. What aspect or area of your life is dark? It's dim. Maybe the light bulb needs to be changed. How is your career, your job affecting you and your health and your life? If it's not contributing in a positive way, it's time to make those changes. And if you don't make it and the universe loves you very much, it'll make it for you and let you go and then you won't be prepared so if you get the calling and it's in your ear make the change so it's not the universe surprising you unexpectedly also in relationships if you're not happy there is someone out in that world that that person will make happy 
and it might not be you. So with that being said, I hope you have a beautiful full moon, partial lunar eclipse in Cancer at 20 degrees and make it a good one because we only have two more. All right. Peace out, your Lucid Living Coach. And if you'd like to schedule a life coaching session or an astrology reading, hit me up. I also have awesome cosmic bracelets, planetary bracelets for sale for $30. You can find it on my Etsy at Creative Commodes or KLA Artsy Vintage. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for joining. Peace out, y'all. Love you. Oh, my website, www.lucidlivingmovement.com. All right. Love you.